Welcome to How to Tune Pianos, the Hobby, Skill, and Career of Piano Tuning. My name is Mark Sarazano. I'm a registered piano technician. And today I'm going to discuss equal temperament with you. This is a very important uh, element of my course. Uh, if you're taking this course, then I would have already asked you to watch this video because it describes a lot of the preliminary theory that's needed in order to understand how to tune a piano. A uh, previous video that you should have seen uh, involves the harmonic series. Now the harmonic series basically is a series of frequencies that are produced when all notes are produced and these frequencies result in pure intervals. These frequencies create pure intervals. So considering the harmonic series we have a couple of intervals of interest that are contained within that harmonic series that produce pure in-tune intervals. The octave is the first two notes on the harmonic series and that is created by doubling the frequency. So if you have A440, uh, A4 being 440 hertz, a pure octave is simply double that or 880 hertz at A5. The perfect fifth is also found in the harmonic series between the second and third partial. Now Again, these intervals are pure. In other words, they are in tune, they sound pleasant, and they're harmonious. The perfect fifth found between the second and third partial is produced simply by multiplying by 1.5. So if you have A4 at 440 hertz, the perfect fifth above would be E5, and the frequency that would produce a pure perfect fifth above A4 would be 660 hertz. So, for the purposes of demonstrating equal temperament, let's remember that to produce pure octaves, multiply by 2. To produce pure perfect fifths, multiply by 1.5. So now, creating pure intervals within the piano. What happens when we try to go from one point to another using two different paths and these paths create only pure intervals. Pure intervals being a harmonious interval that sounds really nice and is desirable. Well, let's consider the keyboard. We have A0 as the first note, A7 as the final A. And this is a nom uh, naming nomenclature for the piano where we start at, at zero to name the note names and the numbers will change every C. So the first three notes are A0, A sharp zero, and B0. And then we start with C1. And everywhere along the line, whenever we go from B to C, the numbers change. So we can go from A0 to A7 by octaves. We got from A0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and so that's seven octaves. If we start at A0 equaling 27.5 hertz, we get to A1 simply by multiplying by 2. That's 55 hertz. And so on, 110. Here's A4, 440, which we're familiar with and up to 3520. That's the frequency of A7 when we start with A0 equaling 27.5 Hertz and keep doubling the frequency for each pure octave. This is an important number to remember for the purpose of demonstrating equal temperament. Pure octaves produce A7 equaling 3520. We'll come back to that later. What about going from A0 to A7 only making pure perfect fifths? And it turns out that the cycle of perfect fifths fits perfectly from A0 to A7. You start at A0, a perfect fifth above that is E1, a perfect fifth above that is B1, and continuing on we get 12 perfect fifths through the entire cycle of, per of perfect fifths we end up at A7. Starting at the same 
starting point we did with the pure octaves, we start at 27.5 hertz for A0, multiply by 1.5 to get 41.25 for B, and so on for, sorry that was E, 41.25, and B, 61.88, and so on. These are all the frequencies for each of the notes created by the cycle of fifths, and each of these fifths is pure. And it sounds very, very nice. In fact, we have a two to three ratio with these intervals, so it's similar to having a two to three uh, rhythm. Uh, hemiola, it's called. This, this hemiola, where every second beat lines up with every third beat, is what produces at a fast frequency the pure sound of the perfect fifth. Look at where we get A7, 3568. That's our final point by producing pure fifths. Remember our A7 when we produced pure octaves? 3520. This is where we get when we use pure perfect fifths. 3,568. Here are the octaves, starting at 27.5, ending up at 3,520. Here are the perfect fifths, starting at 27.5, ending up at 3,568. Look, they're different. How is that possible? I can't explain that to you. I, in my manual, I uh, mention at this point that you might want to take a, uh, take a break and uh, contemplate the meaning of life. So uh, for, your, for your enjoyment, I added this next slide. All right, enough fun. Uh, the difference between that uh, 3,520, 3,000, can't remember the number, but the difference is known as a comma. And there's different kinds of commas depending on how you go from point A to point B. There's the syntonic, the Pythagorean, the schisma, the diesis. And, you know, personally, I don't really understand which uh, name goes with which comma. But I do know that um, this is a problem because we can't have every interval tuned pure in the piano. And that's the real purpose of this video is to try to figure out what we're going to do and in the process create an understanding of what equal temperament is. So let's retrace. When we go by octaves, we end up with 3520. When we go by fifths, we end up with 3568. The fifths overshoot by 48 hertz. That's an important relationship to remember, that the fifths overshoot. You don't need to remember the 48, but in, for understanding how to tune a piano, remember that the fifths overshoot when you make pure fifths. They overshoot the octaves. You can't have both pure octaves and pure fifths. You have to choose. When I ask my students, most of them choose the octaves. If we're going to have pure octaves, then we have to shrink the fifths. The fifths must be shrunk so that they will fit into the seven octaves. We say that the fifths are narrow or tempered. If each fifth is equally narrowed or tempered, then we describe this as the equal tempered tuning system or simply equal temperament. What happens when we, to the piano? What happens to the sound of the piano when we squeeze down these fifths? That's a pretty important question. Well, as we said, the fifths are narrow, and it turns out that being narrow means it's not pure. In other words, they beat out of tune. But it turns out that they beat at only about one cycle every four seconds. That's not very fast. I could accept that. But 
when you look at the inverted fifth within an octave, we get the fourth. And it turns out, if you're going to squeeze all the fifths down and then you look at the fourths, they're wide. And they beat a little bit faster, about one cycle every second. We call this sound, this quality of the fourth, as being noisy. And the quality of the fifth as being rolling. Now, the noisy fourth is, is sometimes a little bit uh, undesirable, maybe. Uh, you can start to hear a little bit of noise in the quality of the fourth. It, you know, you wouldn't sing or play a trumpet necessarily, trumpet intervals with a fourth like that, necessarily. Uh, you'd have a choice, of course, with these instruments. With the piano, we don't. We, this is what we get, the fourth beating once, about once every second. But when we start talking about the major thirds and we look at what happens to the major thirds when we squeeze down the fifths in order to line up the fifths with all the octaves, we find that at, a, at F3, A3, that interval, major third, beats at 7 beats per second. 7 beats per second for an interval in the piano. That's about... Or even a little faster than that. That's pretty darn fast. What's more, these beat speeds increase throughout the octave from F3, A3, and on, and double every octave. So, basically, what we have here is the piano being the most out-of-tune instrument in the orchestra. But it wasn't always that way. It didn't happen all at once. We started tuning the piano such that the keys that were most popular, C and related keys, did not have these fast-beating major thirds because people, in my opinion, couldn't handle the sound. The sound was just too harsh for them. So what, what they did was they tuned the piano so that they didn't have those out-of-tune thirds, but the result was that they could not play in unrelated keys. F-sharp, G-sharp, D-sharp. Uh, D These keys had horrible, horrible sounding intervals. Some of them were called wolf tones, and pianists ju just didn't play in those keys. But after a while, people were starting to say, well, look, if I could just, if I made C to E, for example, that major third sound a little bit worse, then I'll get this key, and I'll be able to play in this extra key. And this kept going until Bach, who we believe was a piano tuner as well, and probably most early pianists did tune their own pianos, he produced a book which had some songs written in it that were in 12 major keys and 12 minor keys. And the purpose of the book was to show compositions or studies in each of the 12 major and 12 minor keys for the purpose of demonstrating the color, each of the different colors of those keys. So, starting with Bach, playing in all 12 keys, and moving on to the equal temperament of today, the piano is truly a miracle instrument that really shouldn't be in our houses, but the miracle of it being there is a testament to the incredible adapti adaptability of the human being. Not only was our ear able to accept this different tuning as being the color of the piano, but we were also able, as technicians, to learn how to reproduce this exceptional tuning system. So thanks for watching, and uh, you would be doing me a great favor if you visited my websites, howtotunepianos.com, which has articles, and links to my videos at youtube.com slash howtotunepianos. Those are class videos that I've recorded, that, uh, stored there. And youtube.com slash Mark Sarazano RPT, which has some videos like this one 
uh, describing different uh, elements of piano tuning, which I find think that you will find interesting. And uh, again, thank you for watching, and stay tuned.